Good afternoon all. It's a lazy Sunday and I thought I'd just do something simple. I just thought I'd build a nice simple kit like this DIY FM microphone kit. So what have we got in here? Well we've got a microphone, a bag of components and a circuit board. There's the little microphone capsule and instructions. Well, I'm not sure how much help these are going to be because it's all quite Chinesey. But there's uh, 9018, that's a transistor, I think. Something that's 58 to 62 decibels. And then we carry on with components, uh, some resistors and some capacitors. Very low value capacitors. Uh, there's a 5 picofarad here. Well, of course, they would be because this is uh, around about 100 megs FM, I think. Uh, there's a circuit diagram here now. That's an NPN, I think, isn't it? NPN transistor, an inductor there. I've got a feeling that's implemented on the circuit board. And all the low-value capacitors are all around this back end here near the antenna. And a 1.5 volt cell. Frequency modulation as well. This is uh, well, it's quite a clever circuit, isn't it? Oh, and uh, down here we've got the, yes, there's the integrated uh, coil which is just a PCB track spiralling around, uh, and component placements. Right, you unscrew the uh, microphone here, and inside oh, the strain relief, and also the battery holder, which will hold a uh, single AA, so I'm going to use this alkaline. Yeah, I think I've got all the bits. So this kit has been very kindly supplied by icstation.com, so let's have a look at it uh, right now on their website. So here it is. Uh, it's FM, Frequency Modulation DIY Kit, wireless microphone. Um, it's item number 10147. It's only $2.89, although that's only for another one day, two hours, 27 minutes, and 24.3, oh. Uh, seconds and then it goes up to three dollars fifty nine right let's empty this bag of bits hmm circuit board oh that looks uh, relatively straightforward there's something on there marked zero zero ohms yeah I suppose it is it's a jumper isn't it I'll just check that with the circuit diagram a bit later on uh, there's the transistor lots of capacitors and on off switch wire a uh, bit of bent metal for the battery connector and the microphone. So I presume I have to solder some wires onto that. Yikes. This head is quite nice. I mean, it's meshed and it's filled with uh, foam, quite a thin layer of foam. But yeah, that should reduce pop. This kind of pop. Pop. Um, fairly effectively, I'd have thought. Now, I was going to call this video uh, Lazy Sunday Wireless FM Microphone Kit, but I can't really do that because David Watts's video of the same kit is called Lazy Sunday Wireless FM Microphone Kit. So, I better not do that. Right, so I'm just looking through all the components here, and uh, we've got 104, 103, 102, 47 puff, 24 puff. I don't think I've ever seen a 24 picofarad capacitor before. It's quite weird. 10 picofarad, 5 picofarad, the 9018 transistor, a couple of 20Ks, uh, a 51 ohms. Not sure what that is. It's got some green on it. That's probably the uh, 1.5K, that one there. And then this one, which is black, green, black, silver. Now, on here it's got 0.5 ohms, so that could be black, green, 0.5. Uh, although on the board it's marked zero. So uh, I'll assume that's the 0.5 ohms and shove that in there and see what happens. Right, let's get assembling. Right, today soldering iron, mains powered Antec CS18 and uh, sponge is a green one with a lopsided smiley. Right, I'm just going to shove these components in because uh, I'm not sure I can be bothered to check them all. So let's put the transistor in and I'm going to do what I never do which is just shove all the components in bend the legs over flip it over and solder it i never do that right a couple of anomalies that seems to say 36k or 39k or something like that and i've got a 20k i think i'll shove that in 
that says 1.2k and I've got a 1.5k. Um, I think the components supplied tally up with this. Yeah, 1.5k, 20k. That doesn't say 39k, does it? So I'll just follow the overlay, I think. Right, let's see if I can go for a single take of all the soldering. So I'm going to have to work quite quickly. don't normally do single take stuff. I like to uh, stop, gather my thoughts, and then start shooting again, and then assemble all the shots in the YouTube editor later on. And it's quite tricky to get to all these components with all the legs in the way, isn't it? Yeah, normally don't do this. Let's try and solder those two together. That one. Can't get the solder in either. That'll do these two. Yeah, should I turn the board round? I don't think I can because it didn't fit in the grippers very well, the croclets. Oh, I'll have to turn it around, I think. Right, let's try that. Oh, there's four in a row there. Can I get to them? Get in there. It's quite tricky because all the sticking out wires are poking up and in the way of everything. Not many more to do. That one. I'm doing this sort of factory style, really not taking much care over this at all. Rather oversized, I cannot see what I'm doing. Oversized blobs. Two more, can I get that in there? And then we'll see what mess the top side of the board is. When it's done, it's done. Right, let's go for a bit of a clipping session. Try and get these to fall in here. For some reason, my cutters have become magnetized. Which is a real irritation because things won't fall off them. How do you unmagnetize the clippers? Cutters, I should say, wire cutters. Oh, this is so tricky. Oh, that piece of wire shot across the room. That's going to end up in something where it's going to go bang, isn't it? Oh, this is really annoying, this magnetized cutters thing. <laughs> it just keeps sticking to the cutters. That's so irritating. I need to put this in a big degaussing magnet to get that magnetism off. I think this is going to look pretty horrid on the top side when I've cut all these wires off. Nearly there. Done. Okay, that's the underside. What's the top side look like? Oh, not bad, although looks like some components fell out. Some of the resistors didn't fit properly, so I just lifted them up. Like I say, I've done this factory style. I haven't really taken much care of it at all, but that's okay. Now I need to solder in the switch, and it appears that the switch solders onto the board and actually screws with these two little screws down here onto the uh, microphone body and therefore the board is just sort of held suspended inside the body courtesy of the switch so uh, let's get that soldered in right these three flow quite a lot of solder into those hmm it's not taking terribly well perhaps i should have fluxed these anyway it is taking maybe it's just a temperature thing Yep, that's gone in okay. Now, how do you identify the positive side of an electret condenser microphone? Well, it looks like the little lines running out to the casing is the negative side. That's the same there. Line running out to the casing is the negative side. Yep. Well, there's lots of bits of wire here, all too long, I would suggest. Although I think I might use, oh, actually that very long piece of black wire could be the antenna which I think goes on the far side of the 5p capacitor uh, that's certainly what this seems to be hinting at 
5 picofarad capacitor to the TX antenna. So yeah, but I'm going to need some bits of black to connect the microphone in and really the battery compartment could do with proper colour coded wires. So I think I'll have to cut these down. So a bit of black wire onto the negative of the microphone. If I can melt the solder that pad that's on the back of the microphone. Yeah, just about. It's not very good because it's probably a different type of solder and this wasn't very well tinned. Should have pre-tinned it probably. In fact, let's do that with the uh, yellow positive. Pre-tin it. Put it down onto... Ooh. That's all moved quite a lot. Right, that's the uh, microphone, got some wires on it. And then you've got this thing, uh, which is the battery holder, which kind of sits halfway into uh, the mic handle. And I assume that the condenser mic sits in that little hole in the top, so that it's kind of sitting in the middle of the dome thing here. So mic in there, run some wires down behind the battery and come down uh, onto the circuit board. Let's do that. Right, yellow wire onto this brass positive battery connector. Can I tin that? Ew, it doesn't want to tin, does it? Okay, uh, oh, solder's got a bit short. Solder that on there. Yellow wire on there. Hmm, not very convincing. And now I need to solder some black wire onto this spring, which will sit at the bottom of the battery holder uh, like that. Oh, this power bank didn't last very long, did it? That's just gone off, so no longer do I have an additional lighting from uh, Spring Onion. That's packed up. So battery pause will go to the switch, so that's switched onto there. Uh, let's look at the circuit diagram. Battery neg goes to the other side of the 103. Uh, the 103 is there, so it's this little square pad. That also has the 51 ohm resistor and that, which is 47 PF. Yeah, 51 ohms and 47 PF. So this is the negative line. That also has microphone neg. And then mic pause goes between these two resistors, 20K and 1K5. Oh, this power bank didn't last very long, did it? That's just gone off, so no longer do I have an additional lighting from uh, Spring Onion. That's packed up. Right, there's battery pause going to the switch. Now I've got battery neg and microphone neg. So I just want to kind of join those together. Then, ah, they're not joining together very well. And they went to this square pad here. So let's tack them on there. That should be good enough. And uh, mic pause, it looks like. Let's tin that up. Goes here, which is that between the two resistors thing. So that should be it all wired up. Now I could power this up now and check it on my radio, couldn't I? So I'm going to use my uh, IMAX free play wind up radio. Yeah, as usual, this thing is always flat. I've pre-tested it to 100 uh, on the FM band, so let's give it a bit of a wind. Oh, that's pretty loud. And then what I'm hoping is when I plug the battery in, this will just sort of go quiet, or there'll be feedback. So let's plug the battery in and see what happens. Oh, that's quite a tight fit, nothing yet. Oh, very little. I am on the FM band, aren't I? Yeah, AM, FM. Well, it doesn't work. Uh, stupid me, I didn't switch the switch on, so let's try again. Oh. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, there's a quiet patch there. Doesn't sound very good, though. Oh, I found a completely silent position here. Yeah, almost bang on uh, 100 megahertz. So let's have a... Hello, 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 hello. Um, yeah, that sounds okay. It distorts easily. Maybe if I come back a bit, 
Let's turn the volume up. Hello, hello, hello. That's a bit uh, not, not very well tuned. Oh, that's better. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. That's starting to feed back now. Well, it works, so let's uh, get it in its um, microphone uh, holder and put the top on and uh, start singing. So I need to thread the uh, antenna cable, the aerial cable. Let's try and straighten that up a bit. Thread that into there. Is that going to come out the hole in the bottom? No, always the simplest things that get you, isn't it? Right, that can go in there. Uh, or can it? No, it probably can't because that is going to have to fit into there, isn't it? So I think I need to thread the antenna through the body of the microphone first. Through you go. Oh, this is stupid. You don't want to watch this bit, do you? This battery went flat again, so let's wind it vigorously for a minute or so. Right, this thing has to go down into the body of the microphone. Yes, all right, thank you. Certainly tuned properly. Right, that has to be screwed in there, that uh, switch. So let's try and struggle with that. And this is by far the hardest bit, is holding this switch in place while I get the first of these screws in. Wow, that acts as a big aerial, doesn't it? On that uh, switch that fits in the screw. Yeah, a big antenna. Okay, second screw. See if this does. This will as well. Good. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Hello. Yeah, that uh, distorts nicely. Right, that can shove down in there. Doesn't really matter about the surplus wire. And uh, yeah, that's all in place. Hello. Lots of feedback. Excellent. Right, now I'm just trying to shove this grommet in, this strain relief grommet. Actually, it doesn't relieve anything, does it? It just makes it a bit more uh, attractive looking. Hello. Hello. Uh, we've got a nice little, oops, a nice little sticker here on off. So I'll just uh, fit that onto the switch. And uh, finally, the uh, mesh and uh, foamy cover goes on there. Got to be careful not to uh, cross thread that. And uh, she's done. Finished. The microphone is finished. Right, let's start singing a song. Lazy Sunday. And uh, the sound quality is not too, not too bad if you don't have lots of feedback. You can't speak very noisily into this microphone otherwise it just distorts uh, but if you speak reasonably quietly how about uh, from the front or from the side yeah it's not too bad and uh, now I'm, I'm i'm here but i'm going to do a bit of a range test so i'm going to walk down to the front door so let's do that uh, walking down to the front door oh yeah that's not too bad that's about um five or six meters yeah I don't think there's any point doing a uh, much further range test than that because uh, all that's going to happen is it's going to start uh, hissing furiously. So that was a, a lazy Sunday afternoon kit build. This thing started working again, but probably not for long. Uh, if I turn this off, of course we get uh, white noise. Uh, if I turn it on, it's fine if the uh, antenna is in the right place. And uh, yeah, that's coming through nicely. Let's uh, just tune that. It's bang on 100, even though uh, all the components are uh, just... Oh, there goes the flashing blue light. But yeah, that works quite well. I'm quite pleased with that. It's a bit... Um, there's a resonant frequency there, but then that's to be expected. I mean, it really wants to feed back at that frequency. That sort of thing. So yeah, lazy uh, Sunday kit build. Bit of a lazy video really because I didn't uh, put a lot of effort into that. But well, it works, doesn't it? Cheerio.